So let me get this straight. Even in the midst of a war, y'all still are finding time to be racist? Segregation? In the middle of a war? During a pandemic? Telling Africans they cannot get on buses, they cannot get on trains to safety because they are black? During Black History Month? And you want my black ass friends? <laughs> My prayers are with the Africans. Your baby child. Fucking that fly up, baby. Yes. He's like, finally, it's happened to me. Obviously, she's gonna think something is up. That's why she didn't say it. My girl, you're doing that boy, boss. Let's see what you think of something. Let's see if you avoid me, okay? Okay. Let's see what you want to talk to me. Make sure I get y'all child. <laughs> my baby, my baby messing that lettuce up. She eating that lettuce up, yeah, you, better, you better share that lettuce. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Dodo. Happy birthday to We're still waiting on the cake. Hold on, the cake. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mama. Happy birthday to Make a wish, mom. Oh. <laughs> Wait, oh, oh, turn. Just, just. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, mom. It's 
okay, mom? It's okay. It's okay, mom. until I watched it back on YouTube. So I don't know what's going on, but YouTube, y'all need to fix that. Anyway, guys, did you guys enjoy like my mom's birthday brunch? It was so cute. She was, I honestly thought my mom was going to pass out. Like she didn't speak for a good like five minutes. I was like, I was like, okay, mom, mom, happy birthday, girl. You all right? You okay? <laughs> Listen, it, it's, it's too much going on, child. First of all, we, we, it's, it's just too much going on in the world. I can't, I could not have my mama pass out out of happiness and excitement. Like, Lord, have mercy. But um, she had a great time. My family had a great time, and I'm really happy I was able to do that for her. Is it me or like The Lion King is the best Broadway show? The best. Nobody. Me. Nobody, me. Can you feel the love tonight? The peace the evening brings. Nobody, me. And where the journey may lead me, let this prayer be my guide. I cannot stay my family but i'll remember my pride nobody me oh i just can't wait to be king bitch i can sing the lion king songs all motherfucking day you know what though we need we broadway needs to do a lion king 2 version of the broadway play because baby the way they was dragging Scar's son and the Lion King 2, that shit was diabolical, baby. Pride Rock was so fed up with Scar's ass that when they saw that little Negro lion, because you know, you know that's the only reason why Scar was Scar. Did y'all peep that? Did y'all peep the, the racism in the Lion King? Cause I baby, it's not no coincidence that the villain was dark skinned. <laughs> But we know you have to are we gonna address that shit or not? During Black History Month? Baby, the way they was dragging Scar's son, he's not one of us. Baby, they was dragging Scar's son for filth. Them hyenas did not have to drag his ass like that. Deception, disgrace, baby. And then the harmonies came through, bitch. I can't. We need a Broadway version of that, okay? Uh, but I'm so glad my mama enjoyed Broadway. I'm glad she enjoyed the brunch. It's Monday. It's the last day of Black History Month. Now we in a war. During Black History Month. <laughs> Whoo, it's a lot of shit going on, baby. I... <laughs> Child, it is 11 a.m. I have to get ready because I have to do this Amber Ruffin show. After that, shoot, I still have to go get breakfast. I have to make breakfast for myself. I went to the gym earlier. I went to um, Orange Theory. I burned 540 calories and I burned 137 calories on the way there and I, at least another 100 on the way back because I walked there. So I burned a good 800 calories, a good 800, 900 calories already this morning. So, <laughs> bitch, it's lit. I'm going to have me a big ass breakfast. I'm gonna pack on the protein, pack on whatever the fuck I could pack on this morning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Eat good. 
Uh, and then do this Amber Ruffin show. And also, we got to talk about um, Love is Blind. The marriages, the weddings. Because <laughs> mm, I have thoughts. <laughs> Dream Black History Month? <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. So I'll see y'all in a bit. Hey, y'all. All right. So I'm just touching up my makeup real quick. Just got done with rehearsals for the Amber Ruffin show. And I really love the fact that I'm getting to do this at the crib. I'm gonna do my own hair, my own makeup, because I hate people touching me. Like, I really do. Unless, like, I know it's somebody who really knows what the hell they're doing. And I've seen their work and I really love their work. Like, I hate them touching. Like, I hate. <laughs> That's something that is like, I have to struggle. I struggle with that a lot in this, in this business because it's a lot of people who... You know that's their job their job is to like touch you but they don't be knowing what they're doing and they be having you looking crazy and i'm just one of those people that i refuse i refuse to look crazy but again hi amber thank you for joining us um ramel he's doing his last touch-ups but we can just start with the break we're gonna have you run through everything so you'll do the intro and the open and everything and all the transitions okay now more than ever, we're seeing black faces. My bad, my bad. I can start again. Now more than ever, we're seeing black faces in places we've never seen before. From corner store off, not corner store. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry, my bad. I just did this fine and I'm um, having problems. Okay, just go ahead and go into it. Now more than ever, we're seeing black faces in places we've never seen before. From corner offices at Fortune 500 companies to leading roles on screen, all the way to award ceremonies at the Olympics, black women are quite literally going for gold at every turn when it comes to their professions and careers. On this special episode of Listen to Black Women, we're discussing how we as black women navigate the many twists and turns encountered on our journey to professional success. Joining us for today's discussion is special guest comedian and late night TV host, Amber Ruffin. I'm Jessie Wu. Hey, Amber! <laughs> I'm Jessie Wu, and these are my lovely co-hosts, Taryn Finley and Christmas. Amber, what challenges came with carving out your own lane as a black woman in late night TV? Well, I'm... That's a great question. <laughs> I... I don't want to ignore all of your questions, but there weren't really any challenges. Like, really? The show premiered in the pandemic, so I had hung no hopes on it. Oh. So it wasn't like, like oh, wait, this has to work, or else I was like, we're going to get two shows, Max, and I'm thrilled to have it. But I, I will say, like, I did have to wrestle with other people's ideas of what the show should be. All right, y'all. I am done filming Listen to Black Women. Alexa, what time is it? Alexa, what time is it? Alexa, what time is it, sis? It's 5.44 p.m. Hope you've had a good Monday. Alexa, are you okay? I'm doing okay. Thanks for asking. <laughs> okay. Alexa, what should I eat for dinner? Here are some dinner ideas. You can filter by saying things like vegetarian recipes. Or Bitch, I ain't trying to cook. Alexa, what can I order to, for delivery for dinner? I found a few nearby restaurants. You're not giving me no good options. <sighs> okay. Let me look on Uber Eats and see what I can order for myself. I'm like, I'm starving. Oh. I'm starving and I kind of want to order dinner and then like talk to y'all about Love is Blind 
the weddings since I caught up on the weddings I hope it's not too late for me to do that but baby what am I going to eat like y'all ever been so hungry you just cannot think like I'm hungry <laughs> I hate in here. Mm, but my face is beat though. You know what? This is all drugstore makeup. I just did a drugstore makeup video before I did the Amber Ruffin show with Listen to Black Women from Adam Noir. And I'm actually going to edit that and make that a reel. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to step up my reels. <laughs> um. I see a lot of people now, they're doing all that content, like folding their sheets and um, wiping down their countertops for IG. And I, I do enjoy that type of content, but baby, that ain't me. I see a lot of people leaving the beauty world behind, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick up where they done left off. <laughs> Shoot, let me see if I can get me a little brand deal. Shit, since y'all don't need it, because I do. <laughs> I'm hungry. I don't know what to eat. I'm so hungry. I can't think. Oh my god. Alright, let me figure out what I'm gonna eat, y'all. Child, I ain't feel like ordering nothing. Like, first of all, I spent so much damn money this past weekend on my mama for her birthday. Like, between the flights, between the Ubers. Like, I'm talking about Ubers were like $80. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Just uh i hate spending my own money <laughs> oh, i don't want to pay for anything like for a minute like oh my god tomorrow's the first <laughs> rent dude <laughs> i hate it here why ain't nobody tell me like being an adult was so trash. Like this shit is fucking trash. I gotta pay for shit all the time. Like every day. Why ain't nobody tell me that? Just bought a comforter set for $130. $130 just for me to feel comfort. Put me back in my mama womb, please God. I can't. This shit is expensive. I didn't ask to be born, so why am I paying for shit? I just feel like it should be a pay for shit fund for kids. Like, just a pay for shit fund for kids so when the kids grow up and they gotta start paying for shit, it should be a fund. Anyway, child, let's talk about Love is Blind, child. The, the weddings. I'm going to just be brief about this shit. And I'm going to eat my damn egg rolls. Because I ain't feel like ordering nothing. I ain't feel like cooking nothing. I put these egg rolls in my toaster oven. Okay, boom. There it is. Dinner time. Um, Nick is stupid. Nick is stupid. Like, <laughs> I really think Nick likes mess. Danielle and Nick make a great couple because Nick likes mess. Nick is a messy queen. So I feel like the drama that Danielle's going to bring him every day, he's going to live off that. There's no other explanation for him saying yes. Like, first of all, you at the altar sweating like a hoe in church. Nobody was sweating like that but Nick. Nick, your body was telling you no. Your body telling you no, but your mouth said yes. You deserve it. Baby, you deserve a lifetime of misery with that bitch. Stevie Wonder could see that that bitch is insane. So you deserve that shit. Good luck to y'all. Who else was next? Deep D and Shaq. I ain't gonna hold you. As I was watching Deep D get ready for this wedding, I'm like, girl. And it's sad because her gown was beautiful. 
you know, the Indian culture, they made sure they brought that like on both sides. It was beautiful to watch, but I knew it wasn't going nowhere. And you know, Deep Deep, I feel like she tried her best to be what he needed to be, but she knew he was full of shit. She knew. I cried when she said no. Am I the only one who cried? I cried when she said no. I cried. She said, no, I choose myself. No, I deserve someone who's going to love me for who I am. I deserve, like, that takes a lot of courage to do that, especially being 30 and being Indian, like, in their culture, that's a big deal. Like, 30 is like, your life is over. <laughs> like, I feel like the Indian culture honestly reminds me a lot of Haitian culture. It's like, you're 30, you're not married? Watching her mom go and tell her, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, you chose yourself. I stand behind you. The funny part was Shaq acting like he wasn't hurt. Bitch, you knew you wanted to be the one to say no. You ratatouille looking ass bitch. Bitch, you knew you wanted to be the one to tell Deep D no, and that shit fucking hurts you. That's why you turned around and was like, hey, it's still a celebration, hey. You know, I, I didn't want to be the one to say no, bitch. You wanted to be the one to say no so bad, you miserable bitch. You soft ass hoe. You weak ass fuck ass nigga. Like you are whack. And I hope, I hope that every blonde, every blonde under the sun pays you dust for eternity. Okay? Cause that's what you deserve. You old ratatouille looking ass, puss ass motherfucker. I'm glad she didn't pick your dumb ass. Next. Child, you got Marisol and Sal. Didn't I tell y'all Sal was not looking for no damn marriage? Sal did all that singing. Sal did all that singing and slow flower bringing to tell Maria no at the altar. Sal didn't even I, 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 at the altar. That's how I knew that nigga was like, listen, I done sang. I done secured my spot in that conto too. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're not getting married. <laughs> um, Madagascar and Sal were a total waste of my motherfucking time this season. Okay? Total waste of my motherfucking time. I really have nothing to say about them. First of all, Medea ain't even um, invite none of her family members. None of her family members came to the wedding. None of her family members came to the wedding. Like, child. Wait, I think her sister came, but that was it. Her mama wasn't there. Like, nobody was there. Like, girl, anyway. Who next? So, the real Shane decided to show up. Well, not exactly. The night before, he gets into an argument with Natalie and he tells her, I fucking hate you. Says exploitives towards her. Tells her that she's a fucking mistake. He hates her. He doesn't want to marry her. And for me watching her say, oh, up until last night, I knew I was going to get married to this man. For what? N N Natalie. Like, anyway, I'm, I'm trying to see what Natalie saw in Shane other than somebody who's obviously on heroin, crack, cocaine, baby powder, acid, 
battery acid, fix a flat. That motherfucker is on every drug, fentanyl or whatever, the fentanyl, Tylenol, Advil. That motherfucker is crushing every powder under the sun. The man is clearly on drugs. I don't know that to be a fact, but I know it to be a fact. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. The motherfucker is on drugs. He is on drugs. He never liked you. He never liked you. And the picture that he was painting of Natalie to his friends, you know what that, and, and then here come Netflix, like giving her the villain edit, like trying to make her seem like she was like being mean to him all the time. No, what happened is she chose him. His personality was too much. She tried to conform to that. So he's saying slick shit to her. She's saying sl slicker shit. She Korean. Have you hung around Koreans? Them niggas is slick as hell. Shit. Asian people, period. People all people be saying black people got attitudes, baby. A Asian people got us beat, honey. <laughs> they got us beat, baby, okay? And you were trying to conform. You were trying to turn yourself into something that you are not. That man belonged with Shayna's old fake Christian ass. Okay? Hopefully he finds Shayna and Shayna can pray to crack out his spirit. Um, I'm really happy she didn't cho choose him. Like, I'm really happy she didn't. And, but what's sad is it took him calling you names, telling you he fucking hates you for you to say no. Baby, Y'all be looking for love when y'all need to be looking for therapy. Because why would you accept that type of treatment? From the jump, you looked uncomfortable. You looked uncomfortable. No. No. Um. Ayana and Jared. I see so many people happy for them. And I'm like, why? <laughs> everything Ayana addressed was never addressed by Jared no changes were made at least from what production showed us okay it's cute when she was getting dressed she's like oh my god thugs don't cry it's cute when he was getting dressed oh my god I'm a thug but I can't cry that's cute but is cute gonna cut it the answer is no And I'm sorry, she deserves more than a man who's going to twerk and dick her down on his floor-ridden bed while he stays out until 8 o'clock in the morning. That girl deserves more. But let y'all tell her she found love in a hopeless place, child. Let y'all tell her. Ooh, they love. In my opinion, none of these marriages are going to marriage. <laughs> Maria and Jared belong together. Shane and Shayna belong together. Danielle and a therapist belong together. Sal and his ukulele belong together. Nick and that one little friend that gave him that look when he was unsure of getting married to Danielle belong together. Love is blind, y'all played in my face. Y'all played in my face. Don't come back with this bullshit. I'm gonna let you know right now. If you're gonna come back, come back. If you're gonna come back, come back. Don't come back with this bullshit. This season was not seasoning. 
This Love is Blind season was not seasoning. There was a lot of seasoning missing. There was no garlic, no pepper, no goya, no epis. Okay? Y'all played in my motherfucking face. And I'm going to leave it at that. All right, y'all. It's the last day of Black History Month. Go ahead and enjoy these last few hours. And then we're going to slide into what? Women's History Month. <laughs> and guess what? That will give me the opportunity to during Women's Month, y'all asses, all month long. So cheers to us. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. <laughs>